Blossom and Root 101, I have a complete walkthrough of the recently released volume two of River of Voices, The History of the United States. Stick around. Until you look at me and see that I'm the type of girl you're not really that used to. Welcome back, friends of your brand new to my channel. My name is Erlene with Erlene and Company. As I said before, today we're going to have another episode of my series, Blossom and Root 101. If you aren't aware, I'm also the Community Support Director for Blossom and Root. So you're burning questions, how to, and all those kinds of help. I am your person. All right, so I am going to leave relevant links in the description box below. So make sure you check those out. And I'm going to go ahead and ask you to give this video a thumbs up because it helps others find the video. That's just how the algorithm works, and I greatly appreciate it. Now, if this was also helpful to you, feel free to share it on. This playlist already includes two other previous videos, which has a walkthrough of Blossom and Root science from level zero to level five as a comparison and progression shown for each level in one video. The same happened with the integrated language arts from level zero to level five. Why did not I not include early years into it? Because they're a different beast altogether. It's that I also have a page guide over on my Instagram because prior to coming to YouTube, I had an IGTV channel and I have tons of videos in multiple levels and multiple um, walkthroughs and some reviews prior to working um, with um, Blossom and Root. So I had tons and tons of reviews. So you can go ahead and check out my Blossom and Root page guide to see in individual ones. Now to answer one of the burning questions that has been going on, level six is also under development. The literature guides are going to be rolling out starting this summer and there is more information on that that I will link down below. The best place to find um, any updates of releases or revisions or anything like that is going to be in the updates and release page on the Blossom and Root website. I will link that also down below. All right, so let's get to it. A River of Voices, the history of the United States. I have always loved the approach to this. Um, and this is a program that is not going to be for everyone. Some families, this may be exactly what you need. Know that we also have a Facebook group over on Facebook <laughs> called Blossom and Root Families. If you would like to see how other families adapt the curricula, how they work with different projects, activities, and just sharing about their um, Blossom and Root experiences within different lessons, go ahead and join us there as well. I find that that is very helpful for families that are just new to Blossom and Root, or maybe they've been here a while with us, but have no idea about the group and want to offer other people some ideas. Of what I am going to have that review that I did prior to being the community support director. So it's called a review on there. Just want to make sure I point that out. Um, and that's, I don't know, how long ago was that? Two, three years? I'm not even sure. Um, so that is going to be in my IGTV. You can go ahead and see a complete walkthrough of volume that. two is going to cover the 1790s to 1890s. So volume one covered up to 1791. This picks up to 1790s to 1890s, and then volume three will pick up from there on. Volume three, I know I'm gonna be asked. There is no firm ETA at this time that I can offer you. Um, there is a big process that goes into developing the history curricula um, with also the collaboration of a committee of reviewers from different um, perspectives and areas of that expertise. Volume three, I don't have any additional dates or anything like that that I can offer you at this time. So let's stick with this. Let's go on. All right. So you are going to receive with your purchase, the digital files. It's not, you're not going to receive anything physical. It is a digital file. It will come from at this present time at this time that I'm recording this from Gunrow. as, um, when you check out, you're going to receive an email from Gunrow with your files. And also you create an account with the email that you purchase your curricula. Once you um, create that account with Gunrow with the email that you purchase your curricula, if you've brand new to us, anything you purchase via Gumroad is going to be in there. Your files are going to be in there. Why is that important? Because on Gumroad, those files are going to be available to you wherever you are. Maybe you're strolling through the library trying to find some of the titles that are in the optional list. Maybe you are trying to plan away from home. All those are going to be mobile and available to you wherever you are. So it is a website, but it's also an app. So I highly recommend that you download the app at this time so you can have access to that as your plan planning, a screening, or anything like that. What do you need to print? You 
you do not need to necessarily plant hardly anything at all um, if you're able to work digitally. I am not that person, but I can tell you the parent guide, you can go ahead and do it digitally if you're trying to save money on printing. You can print from home. You can print from some of the recommended um, printers that we have. Go ahead and print the timeline if you choose to um, use the included timeline on there. Um, and that is also uh, an option that you can form that as your history timeline or book of centuries. Or um, we use one from School Nest, which is the um, history timeline notebook, and that is our personal preference. Um, so you don't necessarily have to print that one, but if you don't have one, there's one included for you. Now your student pages, that is something if you choose to use the scripted pages that are given, then that is what for each of um, child that is doing this curricula. So you can teach this family style. There is different pathways and we're going to get into that as this well. This is a secular history curricula, Blossom and Root. It is a secular program. It has a Charlotte Mason insp um, inspired approach and also some influences from um, Waldorf and a little bit just eclectic um, base, but it, it does pull in a lot of um, Charlotte Mason type of vibe, but it is secular. So I want to point out this introduction by Christina. Christina is the creator of Blossom and Root because I think it's very, very important a lot of people tend to purchase um, a curricula especially a literature based curricula and then jump into like the first lessons introduction pages is very important that you dive into because there is so much information given to you within those pages that answers a lot of the questions that we see frequently asked whether it's in the group dms or emails that is already addressed and illustrated for you in the intro pages. Now, let's say you read it, you still need help, that's totally fine. Just wanna make sure that I point out to read these introduction pages. So this curricula, I want to read these things. It avoids the standards of heroes and cherry tree mythology of US history in favor of a more complete narrative. So um, it is literature based. You are gonna have a very open-ended approach to this where you have choices that you are able to create your own avenue of what best suits to your family. If you're looking for something that is very scripted and tells you day one, do this, day two, do that, this may not be for you. Be perfectly honest. There is going to be some prep work because of the flexibility and customization style of this curricula, there is going to be prep work. And when you are presenting history from a diverse point of view, from multiple voices, there's going to be prep work because you are sourcing different things. You're not having one single textbook. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with one approach versus the other. I'm just letting you know what this is versus what it's not, because I think it's very important before you dive into something like this. All right, so there is some options for scheduling this curricula that is outlined for you. He hires um, a committee that reviews the curricula from different points of views, areas of expertise representing different groups and adapts um, the suggestions and things like that. So this is a living, breathing thing um, that things are also reflected in future updates, like such, for example, with volume one. So um, this has come with a great effort of involving as many voices as possible to create this curricula. All right. The schedule recommendations here, you can do in different ways. This has 38 weeks in it. So not 36, but 38 weeks. You can aim for a traditional schedule. You can aim for a relaxed schedule, or you can do this, plan it out the easy way, which is also covered on here. So you can, um, and I'll go ahead and add my personal way is I treat these as block studies. I completely pretty much ignore the fact of there's a sequence to it and pull out but this is me i am very comfortable with i am very comfortable with piecemealing things and pulling things apart to relate it to something else that we are studying and not exactly unit study i call it block studies because we are more waldorf inspired in our approach um even in our old, older years 
This is has a pathway from starting from gentle pathway all the way to the advanced pathway. So you have for your elementary kiddos, middle school, and then some extensions that you would follow with a standard um, plus extensions for advanced students if you want to adapt it for high school students and even adult recommendations. So step one is absorb. Each lesson begins with a lesson foundation and I will go over that. And then, you know, for the middle list, you're gonna have all those points that you're familiar with as science. Step two is gonna be explore. Step three is gonna be record and then permission to go off grid just as she's always done. All right, so you have the main goal, you have some key points, you're gonna break up the step one. So now we have the step one, which is the absorb part. So gathering perspective. So this is setting the stage for discovery, right? You have clickable links and that's gonna be a separate file in your Gumroad. And I would just suggest to, if you're doing it like, you know, casting from your iBooks or whatever and other stuff, you can save that file under your iBooks, go ahead and download that file instead of just keeping it in the Gumroad and then you can access it easily or just keep it in on Gumroad. It's just, just like, you know, something easy for you to do so without having to go into multiple places. Um, anywho, you have um, category one is for the minimalist and that's the lesson foundation. So if depending on your family dynamics or how much time you have, you may only go the minimalist route. Maybe you are a book basket folk and you like doing morning basket and all that jazz. That's not me, but we do like to add additional um, titles that I will assign independently then you would have the book basket folks um portion of it which will have additional titles recommended for that unit that is relevant relevant to that particular lesson in addition to your course now know that your spines even certain spines if there is um areas where there's some question on it or you know we it may be uh, a bit problematic or whatever those areas are not included and there's a special note in the curricula that not everything is and you have category three for the visual learners and this is where you will have those youtube links and additional links for uh of different areas that you can expand this study all right step two explore and inquire so in the main goal is the primary goal of this stage is to allow your child the opportunity to make discoveries about the topic at hand. You can mix and match and choose your own adventure. So maybe you just want to do one thing. Maybe you want to do multiple things under that. You're going to see that. And you also have some maps and activities to consider. The activities to consider, you're going to see it noted as, um, you know, per pathway. And I'm going to talk about pathways in just a bit as we are looking at it so it makes more sense. Step three, record, okay? So again, we are Charlotte Mason inspired curricula type um, thing here we're dealing with. So we will have oral narration. So this will depend on your child's developmental stage um, of what they're capable of or you know what you want to um, accomplish with them. And if you're teaching multiple students, you may be doing different variations of this. So oral narr narration, written narration, and scrapbooking with student notebook and time like in book of centuries. So these are the different ways that they are gonna be recording. And especially if you're in a state like ours that requires a portfolio evaluation, it's good to have these visual reference that they can actually show and evaluate it and show the type of work they with the younger ages. It's all about exposure and not so much that they're going to retain it all, but a exposure because they're able to repeat this again um, in later years and go Go ahead they started in the gentle path the next time they can do the standard path and go more in depth right so they're going to get a different flavor if they tend if they go ahead and repeat the same so curriculum. we just talked about pathways and what does that mean so the gentle pathways recommended for k to second or your sensitive learners maybe you have an older child but they really cannot deal with with um, you know the graphic nature of certain events and you know wars and things like that then you would choose the gentle pathway so this pathway is not gonna certain lessons will may say and this doesn't happen often but you may see that certain lesson says there's no recommendation for the gentle pathway for this lesson because then it's not recommended for a sensitive learner it may be recommended for grade three and up all right the standard pathway is the foundational pathway that is recommended for grades three to eight. The standard pathway for this curriculum is designed with those ages in mind. So you may want to have screen content and, you know, um, have different um, bits of like deeper understanding and um, also 
um, you may have a child that maybe is a little bit on the younger side, but is like, you know, all about this. Um, and then you may consider adding stuff from standard pathway. We always recommend to screen the material first because not everything is appropriate for every family. All right, so the advanced pathway. This is additional resources for older learners, meaning grades seven and up. So this standard pathways uh, is written for grades three to all the way to eight in mind. But if you have an older learner, meaning starting at seven, not necessarily upwards of eight and up uh, or nine and up, but seven and up, and parents, you may consider adding these additional resources. So you wouldn't just do the advanced pathway, you would do the standard plus the resources in the advanced pathway. This is an add-on, all right? So you will still need to do the standard plus the extra resources for that. That's a very important distinction. So if you're saying, oh, well, where's the rest of all the stuff? You follow the, stand the standard pathway and then add in the advanced material. All right, so permission to go off grid. Table of contents for part two, let's go over that. Now, um, of course, I have not mentioned this, there is a, that you can go ahead and print and try and, and have a ball with it. There is a free sample on the website as well for River of Voices Volume 2. You will also find that for Volume 1. You can see this um, information that I'm showing you more closely and, you know, hold on to it uh, and have time to digest it more. But again, this is a visual reference of what this is all about while answering Going your into your table of contents, know that this is broken up into different parts. So I only have part one printed on here, but I am going to go over the subjects and all the table of contents of all the parts. And you can treat these as block studies. This is what I mean as block studies. You can treat this as one singular block, or maybe you want to do specifically um, the War of 1812. You can then treat it as a unit study and pull that unit apart. Now, if there's something that they uh, recommend that was previously taught, you will see that there. And again, you will see that as you prep and read over the material. To pull a lesson out and just do that and jump around as need be. It's designed so that you can follow it in order, but it's designed also with the flexibility of being able to chunk it up and pull it apart. And this is how I did volume one. And I, I lasted like two years of volume one because I treated them as Here blocks. you have the end of the 18th century, native people of uh, the plains, the first US census. I love the in-between um, on here, um, obviously the first I, US I, census. And then it has some rabbit trails. Certain lessons have some rabbit trails recommendations, but feel free to take your own rabbit trails as well. Building the White House. This is one that we already did. Um, my kiddos absolutely loved it. Um, and the visual 3D tour and type of thing. The invention, invention of Cotton Gin, life at the end of the 18th century, and then rabbit trail of the Hamiltons. Um, then part two is the early 19th centuries, native people, the Great Plain and the Plateau, the Louisiana Purchase, the Corpse of Discovery. And then, um, and overview so of part three is the mid 19th centuries, native people of the Pacific Coast. So you're still um, with volume one you have that um indigenous history woven in throughout you know throughout the lessons um you still have that presence here um so that doesn't just like disappear um because you're later on in history so that is something that i appreciate and there's certain things that you may say okay well where's this uh this group of people represented that um, will be stated if there's something that's not covered here, it will say, okay, this is covered in volume three. But again, US history is, is vast, right? It's a monster to cover everything, but we, uh, we do our best to present something that um, not only gives you exposure, but teaches you how to seek information and learn more. All right, so forced removal, the Oregon Trail, the Mexican West, flight from Ireland, the California Gold Rush, the first Chinese immigrants, the resistance and abolitionist movement, Frederick Douglass, self-liberation, the Seneca Falls, um, so on and so on. Communication and entertainment, I think that's a fabulous lesson. Um, overview of part four is the Civil War. My kiddos are looking forward to this. This is something we have not um, 
touch like rabbit tails like Harriet Tubman, spies, um, medical care, um, weapons and technology, documenting the war, major moments in the and Civil War. Part five has lessons 33 to lessons 38 and native people of Hawaii. Um, the railroad connects of the East and the West, reconstruction, wars in the West, industri uh, industry and imbalance, the rabbit trails again, and the courage of the black um, suff and suffrage. All right, so here, then you're going to have your visual guide of your required books for each pathway. And then after that pathway, you're gonna have optional books. And those optional books are gonna be listed within each lesson when they're pertinent um, for that, unless it's something that is general for it to do throughout. So here are the required books for the gentle pathway. You have a kid's guide to Native American history. And you will notice that some of the, bo the books have rolled over from volume one. So you're gonna, if you didn't, you notice that you did volume one and you didn't cover it all, um, and again, there's certain sections that won't be covered because it's you know not uh, relevant or appropriate, whatever it may be. Um, then you will have it in another volume. So certain spines are going to roll over from um, from volume to volume, right? Um, so that is something that you will see. So here's a kid's guide to Latino history, and this is one that you also are going to have a, like a little disclaimer. There's certain parts that you know uh, that needed to be brought up, and then a kid's guide to Asian American history, and you see the asterisk here. So you see a note regarding a kid's gay, um, um, Native American history. So I, I sometimes we see questions like, oh, I saw this because you're glancing at the book by itself uh, without looking at the guide and you see something, you're like, hmm, should this look the way this looks or should this be presented that way? And some people miss that there's a note here that says, Listen, this is a point of, dis uh, uh, of discussion. This is something I want to point out. For example, the spine uses the word Indian um, in, um, and Native American interchangeably. However, Native people use a variety of words for themselves, terms like American Indian, Native American, you know, and goes over that and talks about how to talk about this. These little asterisks here are important to look at it. As you're looking at the book, make sure you look at the parent guide because there may be a special note about a spine, right? Nothing is perfect. Then you have a kid's, uh, a child's introduction to African American recommended history. with adult discretion uh, but not required books so this is stamp for kids that um, and then here can be used in all five parts um, then um, you will see completely optional books these books will be listed by lesson number and it will tell you I'm just letting you see one right there it will tell you what lesson number it will pertain to these books there is pages of these we recommend you borrow them. You do not need to purchase those all. You only need to, or and sometimes you can borrow things for extended period of time, but those spines that are say require are gonna be used for a big period of time. So you may wanna buy those and we recommend anything in the optional list so I'm to keeping this here because obviously the optional lists are proprietary um, and obviously you will get access to that upon purchasing the curricula. Um, but then those are like pages and pages from just the gentle pathway. So if you are book basket folk, you're gonna have ample of material that you do not need to feel like you need to search, um, search and source additional material yourself per lesson because that is provided for you in here. Now, obviously feel free to add your own vi um, vibe as well. Now, standard pathway, you're gonna have the same introduction required books for the standard pathway. You're gonna see the same titles and then um, for the addition, uh, instead of a kid's introduction to African-American history, you're gonna see um, a thousand and one things everyone should know about, uh, um, about Afri African-American history by Jeffrey Stewart. And this book is not written for children. Um, it does contain some adult content and may not be appropriate for younger learners, but um, she chose to include this um, for very specific reasons, right? So there is, again, those notes about the kid's guidebook. So you are aware in case you missed it in the gentle pathway because you didn't even look at it for whatever reason. And then some of those books maybe from the gentle pathway may be appropriate for your older learners too because they still love picture books or they love whatever it may be. Um, and you can take a look at that. Then you're gonna have the pages and pages of optional books that you can go ahead and add. And look, I'm still turning. This is still optional books per lesson that is going to have the advanced pathways. The advanced pathways, um, the spines required for it would be a different mirror for young people, a history of multicultural America, 
a young people's history of the United States, an indigenous people's history of the United States, and then recommend it only for parents or high school students. Recommend it for parents or high school student at your um, parent, um, parental discretion, of course. It's a queer history of the United States for young people, Escape to Gold Mountain, um, a graphic history of the Chi uh, Chinese in North America, The Making of Asian America, um, a history by Erica Lee, and then strongly, strongly recommended but not required, you have Alice of Indian Nations, uh, Black History Book. I love of the Black History book by DK. Um, and again, you're going to be able to see this in the sample. So remember that the advanced pa pathway is meant to be done with the standard pathway. These are add-ons. This, this is additional. So you could actually, you know, obviously screen for, um, for your student if you're using this for your student. But for your high school student, if you want to add these additional very robust reads, they can do this um, as independent reads and independent learning. All right, and then you have some additional recommendations as well for that pathway. All right, so now you have, have an overview of that um, particular part. So remember, part one included a certain number of lessons and then so on and so on. Each part does not have the same number of lessons, so know that. So you each have section or each part is going to have an overview that is going to rehash the pathway all in one. It's going to have the um, some of the longer read aloud um, recommendations and what the main um, points of you're going to be learning about. So this could be very helpful for you at a glance to look things ahead as you're planning to. So again, uh, our overview is to provide a brief glance at the content included in each part, to provide a list of the spines needed for each pathway in each part all in one place, to provide a list of longer read aloud that you may wish to include as you complete each part. So that is gonna be included here. So you're gonna see this again. You have the K through um, second and then sensitive learners. Now we're asked often um, if you would recommend uh, the uh, a River Voices if you just have younger learners. It completely depends on you and your family and what your kiddos um, like and what they can handle. Um, there is a gentle pathway. Obviously the gentle pathway may be too much for certain um, kiddos as well. Um, or made, uh, you know, something that they don't have the, the stamina the, um, for um, yet. For my personal experience, my kiddos have been doing very robust history since um, K. So it was something that was very much appropriate for us, even though this came... Um yeah, they were still pretty young when the, when River Voices Volume 1 came out. Um, again, and it's all about adding the appropriate activities as you make like the pathways and then make it be free to make it your own. Um, you don't have to follow everything as scripted. If a spine is too much, feel free to um, tie in your optional read instead, however you want to do it. Um, then some families say, oh, they prefer to wait until grade three to start something like a River of Voices. And that is completely up to you. It really depends on your child. Um, coming from a, um, a family that we are very like history heavy, our kids were fine with that. Some um, will recommend if your child, you have a younger child that is a tag along to an older child, then definitely. But if you only have um, younger kiddos, maybe wait. So really that's up to you. Um, and so I've seen both recommendations. My kiddos were very fine um, with having it at a younger age. Some families are just like, no, they rather wait until late elementary. So that's up to you. Um, and just evaluate what you're looking at. And especially because you can look at the sample and get an idea of what the framework is and then see if that's something that your kiddo uh, would enjoy. Um, and again, with the younger years, you have to remember is about exposure. All right, we're not looking for mastery in the younger years. All right, so end of the 18th century continues. Here it talks about the um, standard pathway we were already went over. And then the longer read aloud for here would be fever um, 1793. I just wanna give you an idea. And again, so it talks about peril, um, distress and death and things like that. And that is highlighted there by Christina for you. So you are aware, pay attention to the bolds and asterisks and things like that. And then overview for advanced path, um, pathway and then go over that. And then also you're gonna have some, um, information of things that were covered in volume one. Why is that important? If you did not do volume one because you cover that point of history with another curricula um, and you did not um, do it with the River Voices, they're going to cover some areas that may be beneficial that your child reads before diving into this or while diving into this that was already covered. So if you did another curricula, they did different types of spines and stuff like that, You it may be necessary. For example, this was covered in volume 
one from a different mirror of young people, and they may want to read the introductions to chapters one and three. They may want to read the introductions here from uh, young people's history and so on um, prior to um, diving into this area because that was already addressed. So this is coming from with the assumption at the same time coming with the guidance if you didn't do um, volume one. So it comes with the assumption that you're following through from volume one, but also if you did it, hey, catch up by doing this, all right? Um, so then here is a lesson. So let's take a look of what a lesson would look like. This is lesson one, Native Peoples of the Plains. You will have in this lesson an introduction of what you are going to be learning about and then some important information that um, about this particular spine that you saw it highlighted somewhere else. It's repeated there for you again in case you missed it and it's there and then to learn more information right there. That is not always something that is pertinent um, um, that is going to be in every single spot, but if it's pertinent to that lesson, it's going to be highlighted for you. Then you have your tracks, okay? So you're gonna choose your own adventures. Gentle pathway, um, standard pathway, advanced pathway. You see the empty check boxes here because you can use this as like your lesson planner right there and check off what you're going to do. And again, choose your own adventure. You're doing for sometimes the spines are gonna be the same for the gentle pathway and starting their pathway. Where it may vary is the activity, where it may vary is the visual guides and things like that. Some stuff may be appropriate for both and sometimes it may only be appropriate for one. All right, so you, so have, you have like category one here and then you have the category two. So you choose your pathway and then you choose whether you're gonna do lesson foundation you're gonna, or you're gonna um, add the book basket folk in addition to that. So you would choose gentle standard and advanced pathway. So this is your lesson path um, foundation. You're gonna do this area regardless, right? Regardless if you're gonna add book basket, regardless if you're gonna add the visual aids and anything like that, you're gonna do your lesson foundation. These are the ones that are gonna be listed with your spine in mind, right? So these are your lesson foundations. Then you decide, okay, am I going to add to my gentle pathway or standard pathway a book basket option? Am I gonna add um, an additional um, longer read? or am I gonna add that? So, and then so on. So then you, um, if you have visual learners, you can opt to add this adventure to your journey. So you can um, have these links that will add um, a different context to the lesson. These are going to be in a clickable file that is a separate file in your Gumroad app, all right? And then here you have additional links and then, um, that continues on sometimes there's quite a bit you don't need to do absolutely everything again you're choosing your own adventure all right so here you have some additional links that are listed for the standard in advanced pathway and then you can see like you can as you're linking through oh i definitely want to um do this um billy um millis one I, I and then check it off there so you can reference it um in your click a little file of which one you're going to do or add it into your own playlist for that lesson that actually is what i recommend and if you use Google Classroom, you can also like actually sort it there of which ones you pick because let's say you're not doing absolutely everything. You don't want to do absolutely everything. That sounds crazy to you. You don't want to do that. Um, then you want to go ahead and select the ones and you can just go ahead and add it to your Google Classroom. Your lesson is ready to go and ready to prep, um, ready prepped to go. And then you can just hit it right there from your day's um, lesson plan and click it from there. And if you have older learners, you can go ahead and send it to them through Google Classroom. This is just one option. This is something I do. So I just wanted to offer that suggestion. All right. So then here you have activities to consider. Now the activities to consider are also going to be suggested either by all pathways, gentle and standard pathways, um, or tips for advanced pathways and things like that. So you will know what would be appropriate for which pathway and then feel free to look beyond that because you may be like, oh, we're doing gentle pathway, but my, tittle, my, my kiddo would definitely love this. So I can add that. Again, there's no rules. You can go ahead and choose your own adventure. All right, so enjoy an activity with a kid's guide for Native American um, history. This will actually indicate which one to choose from or, uh, or, or if many. So make sure that you look at the suggestions here instead of blindly looking at the spine and doing something that may not be recommended by the curricula. All right, then here you have the activities to consider. Then this is the student notebook, right? So this is like that written part or oral narration 
information. So here, choose um, one of the people highlighted in this lesson, and then it gives you a lesson, um, uh, an activity to do that. This is pertinent to all pathways. And then here is a way to extend it for older learners. So you're welcome to take prompts from any lesson and extend them for old, older learners. For example, this lesson, you may ask them to write a biographical paragraph on one of the people they've learned about, a short essay, um, and then it continues on, or you know, doing a compare and contrast of different nations, and then gives you ideas, right, of how to expand it beyond that. So again, this is not a curricula that's going to tell you day one, do this, day two, do that. You're going to choose your own adventure. So whether you take one week for lesson one, or you take seven, just because it says lesson one, doesn't mean that it has to take you one week. Feel free to take longer and um, or condense to a very minimalist approach if that's what you need to do for your current where you're at, all right? So know that you can take as long as you need. That's why it doesn't say week one, it is a lesson. So you choose how much time you want to take in a certain place. So let's say this is something that is not of interest to your kiddo. You just want to expose them to it and then move on through. Then, then this lesson may take you just a week. The next lesson, they are completely engulfed in it and they just want to know more. And you want to take every little activity, every little rabbit trail it talks about, every little um, additional books. You may be there for three weeks, longer that's totally fine. Feel free to take longer for, with each volume as you like, okay? So each volume may take you longer if you choose that path, all right? And then here, just so you can get an idea of an additional lesson, you see again, all pathways, here's the key points um, that you are going to um, discover in this particular lesson. So you'll see all pathways and it will it's tell you like some key points as you go um, deeper into certain areas may be appropriate for all pathways or maybe just um, one, two key points for gentle and um, the rest would be for your standard in advance. So it's not all the key points are not always gonna be pertinent to every single um, learner. Some of them is like, okay, if you have a gentle um, pathway to um, kiddos, you're gonna stop here. That's, that's it, you're done, <laughs> right? You don't need to go beyond that. And if you have older learners, then you're gonna um, cover these um, key points. However you choose to introduce these key points, you can do it as a discussion. You can do this as a um, essential question um, as you start off. Um, you can do this, some people choose to do this as a copy work. Some people choose to do this in many different ways or you just read it and discuss like, hey, this is what we're gonna be learning about in this lesson, right? And then here, you will also have um, occasionally sometimes um, as well pointed out vocabulary for the lesson. So here in this particular lesson, you have data, economy, resident, and things like that. And then you're also gonna have like the little highlights, things of that may be pertinent to that lesson, like notable people and events and um, dates um, stuff. Now, this date is not something that is like majorly like a, a main focus of importance. Of course, dates are important, but you don't need to feel the pressure that you have to have your kiddos memorize it. So these are highlighted for you so you can add, add it to your timeline or to your book of centuries, right? Um, and again, you have those little pathways um, and then you have the book basket option and the activities. And again, you can see here how you have those notable people and events and any vocabulary that may be highlighted for you. So very quickly, I will also review the, um, the student pages. So the student pages, uh, you would as you're directed from the parent guide, you will have the additional information of what you're noting or doing or what essential question is right on the student pages. So make sure you look at the student pages as you're planning to see you know, on the rest of the information as a whole um, of what they're documenting. So those are the pages that you would print if you're printing nothing else. Um, and if you choose not to use the mapping and stuff like that from that, then you can just have them use their notebook, whatever notebook you may have them view. Whether you're doing a main lesson book like in the lower grades, whether you're using like school nest notebook like as we do, or just a regular online notebook, or maybe you having your child type their information, which we often do as well. And then we paste it in the notebook just so we have it all in one place um, and doing that. So if you have any questions that I did not cover in this walkthrough, obviously that I just threw a lot at you. Um, so hopefully some of it <laughs> like stuck and what didn't, um, feel free to ask me down below. As always, thank you so much for your presence. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.